Hey, it's Triple J here from Buddy Automotive Innovations. It is Tuesday, May 10th, 2011. Here to give you another sneak peek at the Bid Buddy version 5 release. We'll go ahead and launch the program right here. And we're going to go right into a new auction. So we're going to go to vehicle selection here. And we're saying no auction selected, so we're going to start a new auction. And I want to go to IAA. And I'm going to go to Atlanta, Georgia for this Friday the 13th. I'm going to evaluate checked auctions, and you can see it's going through counting up all those cars right now for you. It's 261 vehicles at the auction, and it's done 261 cars in 12 seconds. So it's a very fast evaluation process. All those cars have now been put into this list view right here, ranked out by my inventory, my requests, and everything else. So that's all correct information for me. I can even show my failed evaluation vehicles and I can see that these first vehicles here are most likely going to be based off of filters I have set up. Older than minimum years, more than miles than I'm looking for. And you'll also get the uh, the oddball stuff, you know, campers, those kinds of things that show up at some auction sites as well. So here's all of our normal vehicles. I see an old one Avalon here that's catching my eye. It's an 89% QCI score saying kind of that 89% of the parts that I look at have a possibility of having a part that I need to have in stock. So it's it's a really good vehicle for us. And uh, we can go in right away. All I've done is clicked on the vehicle and I've already got a bid price you'll notice. I've already got a price of $4,000. I haven't done a thing. I've already got a bid price on it. Sale value of parts is $7,400. Now obviously I haven't selected any front parts or any back parts as good or bad. So let's, let's just say it was hit in the rear. I'm going to go ahead and say that the rear clip was bad. You'll notice it automatically marked the deck lid and the rear bumper as bad as well. Let's say if it was hit on the left side, I'm going to go ahead and mark the left side parts as bad. And you'll see our bid price changes every time I'm updating a price here. So in here, uh, we've got some uh, counts need stars here. So you'll see that this uh, front door happens to be a need more and it has a four star which gives us a green star. I can actually see the details of that part, and here's all of our pricing and all that good stuff. There are 16 different possible sources of prices. Uh, our stock level, our counts formulas are telling us that we should have one in stock based on our five long-term requests and having five not in stock sales. What I do want to do is I want to look at this hood, for example, though. This hood, you'll notice, has eight long-term requests, but seven of those eight requests came from APU Solutions. So if you subscribe to APU's Real Steel product and you then subscribe to their data network, you can actually retrieve automatically all of the requests that are processed against APU, against your inventory for the delivery area that you specify. So in our sales history period of 90 days, there's been seven of these 01 Avalons, uh, this particular part here, this hood, has been uh, written up in my area, my delivery area. So it added those seven APU requests to the one request I have in my IMS, in my Pinnacle or PowerLink or Checkmate system, to give me those eight total requests. Three of them in the, in the short term to show trending, and all of those were out of stock. So it's telling us that we should have a stock level of one, and it's giving us that need more recommendation because we never sold one. So it's giving us that highest recommendation it can give without actually selling a part. So before, without APU, this would have had one request. Not a very, you know, requested part. But now we're getting those, those data requests from APU to give us more inventory, more requests for stuff that we're not getting requests on anymore because of the automatic parts matching in APU. So now we went from one all the way up to eight just by having the automatic data feed. So we've got all those, uh, all those parts selected now. You'll notice even the transmission, even though I haven't selected an interchange number, it's telling me there's two options to pick from this transmission, it's already given me a price, okay? That price source is number five, which for me means the year, make, model, standard wholesale price. So what it's done is it's averaged the two prices available for this part together to get me that price. I can click on it to see that we have an either automatic, and it's a column shift, excuse me, or a floor shift vehicle. So let's go ahead and say it was a floor shift, and now it's updated that price even further to be more accurate, because now it's number two, which is an interchange standard wholesale price now. So that's the actual price that I have stored on this particular vehicle. I even got one on hand here. 
and it's telling me all the details of that one I have in stock. And I can see the interchange applications as always, the years and models that it fits. So that is the the basic parts to the uh, to the inventory or to the uh, bid buddy here. I can also go to bid summary. And here you can see from our bid summary page, we have the value of the parts we selected to be $4,900. Adding in a 33% fluff value of $1,600 gives a subtotal of $6,500. Minus our $8 towing fee, minus our adjusted overhead, scaled up to meet the price of the vehicle. Gives us a subtotal again, uh, minus our fixed pool fee, and our 13% pool fees gives us our final suggested bid price of $3,500. If I wanted to, let's say the car went for $3,200 and I actually want it, I can classify that as a one vehicle and I can go ahead and save and close that bid. So now I have a one vehicle in my list. You can see the green LED light showing it's a one, which corresponds to the way we saved it. I can go right back into it if I want and I can change the status even from here if I wanted to, you know, one loss pending some custom options we have as well. I can also look at vehicles on hand and I can see that I've had five of these vehicles in the past. Uh, one, I have not made any money back on yet. I'm still in the hole as far as breaking even on it. And I've got a couple here that I've broken even on. And the VIN code for the vehicle as well. So there's another quick little preview of our BidBuddy software version 5. I'll even show you how easy it is to set up APU Solutions data feed. All I have to do is to go to Settings, and then our Main Settings, and we have our APU Solutions tab here. All I have to do is check this little box right here to download the request data and enter in the customer ID number, the 15, 20 character number from APU Solutions. And the next time I do my download from my Hollander or Pinnacle or Powerline checkmate system, it'll automatically pull those stats from APU and merge them right into my BigBuddy database. So that's been another quick little preview of BigBuddy version 5. We are starting more beta rollouts today, right now. And we hope to start getting everyone installed on it by the in the next week or two. So keep your eyes peeled for the next video. Probably have it posted on Thursday for our next video. But uh, thank you very much.